Good morning, I just woke up. I slept at this lock. Um, it's not a real camping spot, but it's on I Overlander. People say they've slept here without any problems and it gets dark. Once it gets dark, you can't really see the vehicles from the highway or the, I don't know if it's a highway, it's like two lane road, but it was really nice. A lot of bugs though, but fortunately it was windy. Um, bugs, but it's pretty wild. It's, it's right next to Lake Okeechobee and pretty much on the east side and along the north side the Florida Trail goes right along there and it walks along the levee it's just like a high area because I thought for some reason the lake was taller higher than the canals around it but I just took a visit to the locks and it's the canal is higher than the lake right now I'm guessing throughout the year that changes depending on rain or you know whatever <laughs> they decide however they decide I feel like it's a real big natural lake, but it seems like it's completely controlled by man now. I'm curious what the locks at the southern end look like because back in the old days, it used to be the lake would flood and the water would drain out the south end, and that's what caused the Everglades. So, I don't know. It's pretty wild up here. There's a lot of birds. There's a great blue heron right over there. It's actually a pretty nice spot to spend a night. Today we're gonna head out to, there's a campground going to call Donald McDonald Campground. It's, they had availability over the weekend, so I'm gonna go there. But on the way first, I'm just gonna go out straight east and just try to drive along the ocean side as much as I can. So that's what I'm going today. And we'll visit a couple of state parks along the way. There's state parks everywhere. The main downside to this spot as a camping spot is there are no bathrooms here at all. So there's not really much privacy. So it's best to get here heading when east. it's, yep, heading east. It's best, best to get here just before dark or go pee before you get here. Um, but there, there's no way to go number two at all unless you wake up in the middle of the night. But I'm gonna head out to Publix now. I need to get a few things, just a few things, and I'll just use your restroom. I go by those things and yeah it's a pretty nice spot it was nice and peaceful I think there was one other car that stayed overnight but he stayed up top whereas I drove down the grass and it seems like everybody else is driving down the grass so it seems perfectly fine there's a hawk at a power line so it seems perfectly fine to just drive down as long as you don't like I don't know, gun it and rip up park the turf pretty nice spot actually um, definitely can't spend a day here Yesterday before I came here, I went to on the northwest side. There is a little park there with a pier and they do have bathrooms and they actually have outlets. I don't know if they work, but um, so I just sat there actually and worked on a video throughout the day with the solar, folding solar panel out and just sat there every once in a while got out. There's an osprey nest on, uh, on the light post. So yeah, that's a good option. I think here if you have no other option. Good morning, I'm at Jensen Beach Park now. I'm basically going to stop at a bunch of beaches along the way just to walk and see how they are. And oh, it's really wavy out. Foamy. Wait till you see this. It is rough today. It's not even that windy right here, but wow. Holy cow. It's super white. Everything's all white. Rough waters. Wow. Sand here is like a lot of other beaches, kind of that brownish sand and it's more gritty. Typical sand. It's quite interesting that on the Gulf side near Fort Pickens, that whole Pensacola, all the beaches there were just like super soft, fine white sands. This stuff's a lot more glittery. Fun little drive so far. We drive right by a nuclear power plant. I guess it supplies a lot of power around here. Nice and clean. Right now I'm at, man, I looked it up before I got out of the car, but I forgot. Let's put it right here. I'm at that beach right here and I'm gonna check it out. The sand's about the same, but let's see what the waves look like. I'm guessing it's still gonna be pretty rough. I can hear it already.
it doesn't look hazy here when you look up the beach on either direction it's like a haze i don't know if it's like fog or mist blowing everywhere every once in a while you see like pelicans flying by just randomly it's crazy there's so many pelicans just flying around randomly everywhere big open beach hardly anybody here i'm in t-shirt and shorts so it's not like it's cold i mean sure it's thursday i think Sandpiper, beautiful. Nice beach. Big beach. Those are private houses. I was just driving along and saw that there's a big parking lot here with a beach with white sand. It's the South Causeway Park. My car. This portion of the road actually, there's no uh, road. You have to cut back inland and then go back out. So there's no bridge or anything. So we're going back inland right now. So this is the inlet. And we're actually gonna cut back in and then continue our coastal drive. But it's not white sand, but it's whiter finer i don't know why there's a lot more seaweed here lots of boats docked here because it's more protected and a big old mangrove tree right here pretty wild huh i learned that with mangroves branches like roots will come off the branches and hang down and they're like dangling roots and eventually they become support roots once they hit the ground and root in. It's pretty interesting that it goes out. On the drive here I saw this little grass field by a restaurant. No label or anything but I saw two big tents set up there. Like Coleman, like four man tents. Pretty weird. I don't know if people are sleeping there. I'm here at Fort Pierce Inlet State Park and I just pulled into this dynamite, dynamite viewpoint or something and look what I see in a field here they have little boulders here and there so people don't drive on the grass and I thought it was a boulder in the middle of the grass for some reason and he started moving but he's digging stuff out of the ground I wonder what he's trying to eat he's a big boy he is not too scared he's a big boy reasons like this I definitely don't want to leave the windows open at all I step away to explore the beach here. The water here in this inlet is definitely way calmer. Just earlier I was actually on the other side. But now I'm at the state park. And I'm going to head up to see how quickly the waves get rougher. You could see the rough waves way out there. But here it's still calm. It's fishermen here. I, I want to see them catch something. I'm always hoping they catch something. I guess these things are called black skimmers. I just saw, I just identified it with Seek and it's the right one. Very unique bird, never seen anything like it. Super long straight beak with the orange part like proximal to their head. Very bizarre looking. I thought they were seagulls at first. The other side was a lot calmer, but here you could see the waves. It's like the waves are coming in this way, but maybe the tide's going out. So there's current going this way. It's like, two different things fighting. It's weird. The waves are slapping into each other. And there's this guy fishing. Oh, there's a pelican too. He's going backwards. He's swimming backwards. I'm heading out to the beach portion of the state park and that face is straight into Atlantic. And it's closed though. They have a red flag with a little symbol of something. Can't tell because it's just hanging. But the waves are way too rough for swimming. Surfing's allowed and they, all, they said that the swimming's closed because of Portuguese man of wars. <laughs> never seen one before. I'm hoping I see one on the beach, but kind of doubt it. But never seen one before. If you don't know, they're super dangerous jellyfish that cause extreme pain and could cause a person to drown from the pain. There were some surfers packing up and going home, and it uh, looks like one person just arrived. So I think there's going to be surfers out here. Something to watch.
here at the Navy SEAL Museum. It's right along the road, really. Just a quick turn off. It's free to walk around the outside and 13 or $15, I forget. There's like a few dollars discount for veterans, but there's an obstacle course out here. You can actually go do it if you want, <laughs> if you want. Don't wear flip-flops, right? I guess during the training, once a week, they had to do this obstacle course within a certain amount of time and a four mile run and a two mile open swim all within a certain amount of time. Looks fun. This boat here actually served in Iraq between 2007, June 2007 to February 2008 on the Tigris River. So it's a real, actually, boat, not just a replica. It's pretty cool they have real boats here like that. And it's actually pretty recently used. More interesting stuff. This boat cost $3.7 million and it served in Iraq. Pretty wild and it could fit into an Air Force cargo ship. And it's right here. It's the real one. And they let you go up. There's some stairs here and some people walked up. So let's go walk in and take a look around. I didn't know this, but they actually had submarines as well. It can go down to 110 meters, runs on batteries, and it only fits a few people. It's not very big, but there is an opening in the front so you can have a diver actually come out. That door will close, fill up with water, and a person can come out. <laughs> Pretty crazy. That was a nice little tour. They do have a movie that plays every two hours, but it's an hour 45 and the next time it plays at two o'clock and it goes to 3.45. I'm not gonna get to camp till really late. And I still wanna drive up the coast and hit some beaches. I'm actually gonna look at the map and then decide exactly. I might go back in and watch maybe the first hour of it. But pretty nice place. It's $13 with the military or veteran discount and it's $16 without, which seems like a lot. There's a lot in there, I don't know. I think it's worth it. It was pretty interesting seeing everything. A lot of things here were actually, they're not just replicas, they're actually things used actual in combat, like the Black Hawk was actually in Somalia, in Mogadishu. All right, I'm gonna go back inside. I still have an hour drive to get to the campground for today. And I figure it's gonna take about two hours altogether with all the stops, maybe a little less. Depends on what happens. If an Osprey shows up and starts fishing, I'm gonna be there a while. Um, I did see one catch a fish at the last beach, but I just I didn't film it because it was far away too. But yeah, I think I'm going to go back in, catch the movie for at least an hour and then go. And I, that should be it. I stayed for the whole thing. It was pretty good. It was about the Navy Sea Wolves in Vietnam. They actually formed the detachment in Vietnam and then they disbanded it while they were there when they were no longer needed. But it was actually quite interesting because in Marine Corps we covered a lot of close air support and things like that. So... Anyway, I still have an hour to go, so I gotta get going. I'll probably not stop at too many more beaches, maybe one or two tops.
made it to camp. It's a little after 5.30. It's actually 5.40. But uh, I'm here at Donald McDonald Campground. It's actually pretty nice. It's pretty close to the ocean. And it's only $20 a night. Which is crazy. I mean, you don't need hookups. There's showers, water, garbage. What else do you need? Flushable toilets. And a uh, pretty decent site. Um, some are better than the others, of course. Like, there's one right next to the shower. It's like wide open. But this one's pretty private. So, oh, gotta look for mosquitoes. I'm gonna head back inside. Um, that's it for today. Uh, I think the majority of it's gonna be that Navy SEAL Museum just because it's, I don't know, never been there before, so it was interesting. And um, yeah, I'm gonna eat. I haven't eaten lunch or anything yet. I, all I had was breakfast this morning. And I do have a neighbor with a little yap dog that's barking a lot. So there's that. But I'm gonna open up the window and get inside before I get bitten up. And uh, I'll talk to you some other time. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do tomorrow yet. I'm gonna check the weather. I think I was gonna go to a state park just across the water from here, but not 100% sure. All right, thanks for watching everyone. Y'all take care and you have a good night. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention, it's been eight days since my last shower, January 31st at Everglades National Park. And since then I haven't showered, had a proper shower in eight days. Um, I did do like a bottle shower once, but eight days, a long one. All right, thanks, bye. I decided to visit Sebastian Inlet State Park and walked out on both the southern jetty and the northern pier as far as we can go anyway. There were so many people fishing here and many were having great luck catching sheep's head and someone even caught a giant 23 inch Kubera snapper. The catch limit is 12 inches so it's pretty good. Not only were people having luck though, as this snowy egret caught many fish from these rocks, at least until this pelican showed up and swam up and down right in front of him, catching his own fish. There were also countless ospreys flying and diving over and over catching fish. This is the place to go if you want to photograph an osprey catching a fish. The lazier pelican doe sat by the fish washing station trying to pick up bits and pieces that got washed down from the sink. They're all quite aggressive. I even saw two fly after an osprey after it caught the fish. The osprey though easily lost them. I'm starting to think that pelicans are jerks. Thanks for watching and come back in the next video for my visit to the Kennedy Space Center.